talk about blow-up algebras of determinantal ideals in prime characteristic. Please. Thank you very much, Bern. And uh, I'd like to start by thanking the organizers for this great opportunity. I'm really grateful to be here uh, speaking at this conference. So uh, the title of my talk well, is a bit longer than this, but I was running. I was short on time, so I, I shortened it up. Uh, I will talk about some F singularities of uh, some blow up algebras objects, and I'll be more precise later. And uh, I will say most of this is joint work with Jonathan Montagno and Luis Nunez Petancourt. And if I have time in the end, I doubt it, but if I have time, I'll talk about some more recent work with the same authors and Lisa Secha and Matteo Barbaro, but I don't think I'll get that far. Okay, so um, what I'm gonna say can be done much more generally than this, but for the sake of simplicity, for simplicity and for this talk, I'm gonna stick to the following setup. So K will be a perfect field of characteristic P. And I'm gonna work in the graded setup, so for me S will be a polynomial ring over K. In N variables with uh, some positive grading. I'll just write N graded. By which I mean the degree zero part should be a field and the variables have positive degree. I'm gonna work with an ideal I inside S, a proper ideal. I'm not gonna say it and again, but it's always gonna be homogeneous. All objects, maps, elements are gonna be homogeneous. So if I don't say it, it's intended. And I will assume, again, for sake of simplicity, that it's a prime ideal. I know I is an odd letter for a prime, uh, but in my main application, in my main example, it will kind of make sense. And also, again, it's a reminder that this holds for generally. It doesn't have to be a prime, but for simplicity, I'll stick with the prime case. And R will be S mod R. Okay, so I'm the first characteristic P talk kind of of the workshop, definitely not of the conference of the program, so I feel like I have to maybe remind uh, some of the definitions, even though of course, I mean, everyone here by this point knows them, but I'll do it anyways. So. R is a pure or F split if the natural inclusion of R inside the ring of its speed roots, this is just a natural map that views an element as itself inside the ring of speed roots, if this map splits as a map of R modules. So if, there, if there's a map back, an R linear map, basically sending one to one. Let me just say that. Okay, and R is strongly a fragular. And here I don't really need strongly, but let me, I'll, I'll probably say it anyways. If for all non-zero elements in R, the map from R to R1 over P to the E, so iteration of uh, this P through construction sending one to C to the one over P, this map splits for E sufficiently large. Okay, so clearly strongly fragile rings are F-pure, the converse doesn't hold. And uh, yeah, so the goal of this talk is to study these two F-singularities, singularities related to the Frobenius map, for certain uh, blow-up objects. So in particular, I will focus on uh, blow-up objects Riz algebras and associated graded rings associated to symbolic powers, which Dale already talked about. So I'll basically look at the symbolic filtration of I. So I'll take the 
symbolic powers of my ideal I, and they form a filtration, as Dale pointed out, not necessarily Noetherian. And associated to this, we can construct the symbolic Riesz algebra. Let me just remind the definition. And the associated graded ring. Symbolic associated graded ring. Yeah. It's a prime. That's part of uh, my point in making this assumption. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worrying about, you know, definition of symbolic powers for non, you know, non-prime ideals, let's say. But it can be done. Okay, so since this question will be coming anyways, <laughs> probably, so, I don't need it here, but for simplicity, let me assume that I is an Ethereum filtration, so that these rings are actually in Ethereum. I don't need it for some of the things I'll say, but just in case. I mean, again, in the main application I have in mind for today, uh, these will be in Ethereum, so it doesn't, for now, harm to assume that they are. Okay. All right, and at this point, I'm gonna make a definition, which is gonna be a key definition for this talk. So I'm gonna say that I is a symbolic of pure ideal. If there exists a map which is a splitting, so which sends one to one, polynomial ring uh, is regular, so it's definitely any of those, so we can, we can find this map which in a sense uh, respects the filtration in the following sense. Phi, can people see back there, down here? Is it a bit too low? Okay, uh, maybe I'll just move it up. Thank you, Claudia. Yeah, I forgot about this. But, but maybe for later, I wanted to, you know, to stay here, but okay. But you're right. So, you're right, you're right, you're right. If this happens for every n greater or equal than zero. So basically, when you take a certain symbolic power and you raise it to the power one over p, so this is a, an ideal of the ring as one over p or a submodule if you want, so if you restrict the map to that, you will send this symbolic power into an appropriate symbolic power for every n greater or equal than zero. So if there's some compatibility with this filtration. Okay, so let me point out the first immediate consequence of the definition. Note that if you set n to be equal to zero, then you immediately get this. So in particular, this gives a splitting of R. I guess a phi induces a map, which I'll still call phi, sending, still sending one to one, because that's what phi does in S. So in particular, the quotient has to be F pure. Okay, so this is an immediate consequence of the definition, but more happens, because of course you have that for every n, and you see where I'm going, I think, but uh, so let's, Let's look at the symbolic Riesz algebra just to fix ideas. So you have S in degree zero, and then you have I in degree one, and then you have I squared, symbolic two in degree two, and so on. And down here you have the same to the one over P. I should say um, this is graded with respect to T and graded, and this will be N over P graded. So degree one over p is i. Maybe let me skip a little bit. In degree p, there's symbolic p to the one over p, degree one. And then maybe one more. And so on and so forth. 
Thank you. It's all to do one over p. So phi induces, I mean, phi is defined here. But then phi sends this guy into here. So you can, you get an induced map here. I to the p is contained in I. So I to the p to the 1 over p is contained in I to the 1 over p. So basically, all this chunk is mapped here. The next p elements will be mapped here. Now, by choosing n equals 1, you get that this is in here and all the next. So basically, you get a map going up. OK? So phi is a map from the Riesz algebra to the 1 over p to the Riesz algebra, which is, I mean, I guess as linear in principle, but it's really linear over the Riesz algebra. And it sends 1 to 1 by construction. So it is a splitting. So the Riesz algebra is f pure, the symbolic Riesz algebra. And the same argument with the, you know, a little more effort, but kind of the same argument works for uh, the associated graded, they are F-pure. So this justifies at least the terminology and the definition. It's a symbolic F-pure ideal. It satisfies that. And as a consequence, you get that the symbolic Riesz algebra and symbolic associated graded ring are F-pure. OK. All right, now, I mean, I've given, a, I've given a definition. I told you why it could be interesting. Now, of course, it might never happen, right? I mean, it could be like a not really useful definition. So the next goal is to convince you that this does indeed happen. And um, to do that, I need to do a review of Feather's criterion. And most actually, it's proof more than the statement in a way. And then see how this translates into this setting. and. We move from there. OK, so let's review Feather's criteria. OK, so let me call M maybe the maximal ideal of S. All right, so R is F pure, or a split, let's say. So, well, we want a map from S1 over P to S, which sends I1 over P into I, and which doesn't send, let me, let me phrase it this way, it's a bit odd, but let me phrase it this way. It doesn't, I mean, of course, if this happens, it will not be surjective and it will not be a splitting. But you know, in this case, they are equivalent. Remember, everything is graded here. Okay, Maps, or elements, ideals, it's all graded. And now, a different way of saying this, using the fact that S is a, regular, is a polynomial ring, is that there is an element, homogeneous, which sends i inside i to the bracket p. This is this compatibility condition. And f should not be in m to the bracket p. Right? So this is the last condition. So Feather's criteria is telling you that you can find an element in here, not in here. OK, so now let, let's try to use this idea to rewrite this statement. OK, so I will be symbolic F pure. Well, if we can find an element which for every n 
sends this ideal to the 1 over p into this. So what I want is an element inside, let's see. This column, right? This is the same requirement as this, but now with an ideal which is not I. I mean, with two different ideals, I guess. I guess if you plug in n equals 0, you get exactly this column over here. And we want this to happen for every n. And we want this to be not inside m to the bracket p for the same reason. Okay, so symbolic of purity in terms of Feather's criterion, let's say, or revisited, is this condition. Now, of course, this is uh, not really an ideal condition to check. You have to check it for every n, and you know, it could be complicated. But, okay, this is a conference for Craig Unicky and uh, Mel Oxter, so I'm happy you know, to cite at least one result of theirs, and this is a result I really like. Uh, so let's set h to be the height of the prime or of our ideal. Then there's a uniform symbolic power that we can stick inside all of these colon ideals, which is i to the symbolic h times p minus 1. So it's a, a use of the flatness of Frobenius, of course, and a pigeonhole principle type of argument. And it's in the Hoxter unique. I mean, the, not exactly this statement, maybe, but uh, these ideas are from the Hoxter unique paper on symbolic powers, containments on symbolic powers. OK, so what's the point of this? Well, if we want to show that this is not in here, then all we have to do is, to, is show that this ideal, this, one, this single ideal, is not here. So this will be our goal to show that something is not symbolic of pure. And we can do even better, in a sense. So let me show you what, what more we can say. Suppose, so if we can find an element which I'll call G and a monomial order, such that G is in I to the H, but the initial form of G is a square free monomial. Then I claim we're done, meaning I is symbolic of pure. So we reduce the question to a one element question. Why is this? Well, it's really simple because if we set f to be equal to g to the p minus 1, then on the one hand, it will be in the correct symbolic power. And on the other hand, it will not be in M to the bracket P because of this condition. I mean, this monomial to the P minus 1 will be in the support of F. So all we need to do to get symbolic F purity is to find such an element and such a monomial order. So that will be our goal. Our goal where? Well, as I said, I have a main application in mind for today, which is the case of uh, ideals of minors of a generic matrix. So my ideal will be I sub T will be the ideal of T minors of X. Okay, so as I said, I mean, maybe I looks, I being a prime looks a bit less weird now, so I is a prime, IT is a prime, ideal of S, and in fact, the quotient is uh, known to be strongly regular by another result of Unique and Oxer, Oxer and Unique. Uh, but I'll get to that later. And, okay, so in this setup, our goal is to construct this element G. 
And rather than doing it generally, I'll do it on one example and then we should, I mean, from there we, we induct. So let's say M is four, N is six, and T is three. So I'll be looking at the three minors of this four by six matrix of variables. Okay, so I'm, I'm gonna draw some lines and then explain what they mean. So starting from the first, so moving along from top left to bottom right, I start with the first three minor and then I have a or three, length three anti-diagonal, then length four, and so on. So my polynomial G will be delta one times delta two times delta three times delta four times delta five, where the deltas are the minors associated to these anti-diagonals. And I take the maximal minors, meaning delta one is three by three, these three are four by four, and delta five is again three by three. Okay, so this by construction is in I three squared, I four cubed, right? No, I mean, <laughs> yes, but also. Now H here is eight, so I need to be able to say that this element is in I3 to the symbolic H, eight. Now there's a general statement, if you want a consequence of uh, uh, Zariski-Nagata type of theorems, or just, you know, can just prove it directly, which says that if you want, if you trade this sub-index, the size of the minors, and you, you, know, you reduce it, then you gain in symbolic powers on top. And if we use it here, we have that this is in I3 squared, and I4 is contained in I3. So each copy of I4 is contained in I3 squared, and I have three copies of them. So in the end, I get into I3 to the eight symbolic, which is what I want. And the point is this works in general. Uh, not just for this example. So to conclude, I need to show you what the monomial order is, and for this, you can take any anti-diagonal term order, or monomial order. Which means any order, monomial order that, for which if you take a minor and you compute the initial form, you'll get the anti-diagonal. For example, you can choose lex, just lex order from this box left and then moving down. So that would work, for example. But there are other choices possible. Well, if you do so, the initial form of G <coughs> will be, well, the product of these lines. So it's just, you know, the product of the entries corresponding to the lines, which is a square free monomial. And so you're done. So the symbolic res algebra <coughs> and associated graded ring of a uh, ideal of minors of a generic matrix are F pure. Now I should say that the symbolic res algebra, first of all, is Noetherian. So these are all Noetherian filtrations, which was uh, my point before. And second, they were, the symbolic res algebra was known to be F rational by work of uh, Bruns and Koch. But that doesn't imply F pure anyways, and uh, there's no, there was no mention of the associated graded, but also uh, we can prove more. And I want to take the last five minutes or so to show you we can actually prove uh, strong F regularity. So it's theorem. So this is, I mentioned at the beginning, but it's with Jonathan Montagno, Luis Nunez Petancourt, and myself. <coughs> For ideals of T minors, we're in this setup. 
OK, so how does the proof go? Um, so let me go back to this picture. You'll notice that I started at the three minors, but I really could have started earlier because, in, I mean, meaning taking this one minor, these two minors, and also the last one, because in terms of being inside the symbolic power, that's even better. I mean, the more factors you put, the better, right? It wouldn't help, but why not? And also, in terms of the initial form being square free, that wouldn't matter because I would get you know, this monomial, the product of these two monomials, so it would still be square free. The reason I didn't do it is because I want to use a criterion of Oxer and Unique, uh, which will give strong F regularity of these objects. So what's the criterion? Well, let me call, let me, I don't want the camera to go crazy. <laughs> so I'll just redraw the matrix. I'm going to call delta this two minor, the top left two minor. And I'm going to use maybe like a wiggle for the anti-diagonal. So, well, clearly, delta times f is still in I symbolic, I'll write it generally, IT symbolic H. It's really in this example I3 to the 8, but of course this works in general. I mean, if, G, if F was then uh, to the P minus 1. I'm taking F, which is G to the P minus 1. It's the same notation I used before. Okay? So if F was then delta times F clearly is, but also this element is not in M to the bracket P. Why is that? Well, be, again, because of initial forms, right? If you compute the initial form of this, you'll have a square free monomial to a P minus one times the anti-diagonal. Maybe since I introduced this notation, let me use it. It's pretty clear, but. So you'll get the initial of f, and then you'll also get the anti-diagonal. But it's still not in m to the bracket p. So that guy will not be in m to the bracket p. What's the effect of this? Well, using this you know, framework, there are maps for the Riesz algebra and the associated graded rings. which send delta to the 1 over p seen in degree 0. Depending on which object you look at, it will be maybe a class or something, but it doesn't matter. I mean, in appropriately interpreted, this will go to 1. So there is a splitting of this element. And finally, and with this I will conclude, S mod it localized in delta is a regular ring. The singular locus of this is the ideal of t minus 1 minors. This is a t minus 1 minor. OK? So the fact, this fact, appropriately used, tells us that this fact tells us that the symbolic Riesz algebra localized in delta and the associated graded ring localized in delta are strongly F regular, not necessarily regular. This, this doesn't have to be, but they are strongly F regular. And since they are Noetherian, as I was mentioning, since the are Noetherian, we can use the criterion of Oxer and Unique. They're in particular finite in this setup. We can use a criterion of Oxer and Unique, which says that if you have a localization which is strongly F regular and the splitting of the element you're localizing at, then the original rings are strongly F regular. Let me just write SFR. And that's the end of the proof. And before quitting, I will just say that um, we can do this for more general filtrations. Um, for, I mean, it doesn't have to be the graded setup. And uh, in the recent work, 
and, and for other type of uh, determinantal objects like Fafians, uh, uh, miners of symmetric matrix, matrices, ankle matrices. And in the more recent work with uh, Lisa Secha and Matteo Varbaro, we're focusing more on the ladder uh, setup, but still determinantal objects, but ladders and uh, those kind of objects. Yeah. So thank you very much for the attention. Thank you.